This is the story of three unusual animals of the Kalahari Desert. What is she thinking? A young lioness who we follow from her father's takeover of the pride to her first kill. Crazy Jackal, a most cantankerous animal. And Shorthorns, a very aggressive Hemsbach bull. The story is interwoven with changes in flora and fauna behavior caused by the four seasons and by a severe drought. <laughs> In the cool morning air, two lionesses are tensely scanning the nearby vegetation. Suddenly, a powerful intruder emerges from the surrounding bushes and is after them. The lighter and faster females easily run away. But after a while, the younger lioness joins the intruder. This is a non-violent takeover. No fresh wound is visible on either the young or the old male contestant. Kalahari lions fight less than lions elsewhere because their population density is lower. The dispossessed older male follows the female scent and repeatedly calls them. The arrival of the intruder's brother completes the takeover. The two brothers start patrolling and marking the pride's area by spraying selected bushes with urine. Early amorous advances are rejected and mating starts only after the lionesses are convinced of their partner's reliability as defenders of the pride. In the Kalahari, lions mate any time of the year. Many copulations are necessary to induce ovulation. Estrus ranges from two to six days. During this time, lions couple on average twice per hour, each copulation lasting less than 30 seconds. It is the beginning of summer and it is hot and dry. Animals spend midday resting in the shade to avoid the intense heat. During this period, water holes are crowded. Small birds drink early in the morning and late in the evening while hunted by raptors. Falcons are the most successful predators because they reach higher speeds in excess of 200 kilometers per hour. Midday is drinking time for big birds such as the marshal, the largest African eagle. Road runners like ostriches and secretary birds, the great snake hunters. Antelopes drink at any time of the day. When nothing better is available, they drink water with surprisingly high concentrations of salt. Carnivores, such as this brown hyena, prefer to drink during the early and late hours of the day. Leopards are the most nocturnal of the big cats because they kill their quarry by pouncing from less than 20 meters and need the cover of night. They generally drink before sunrise and sometimes they drink after dawn. After three and a half months, six lion cubs are born, three from each lioness. Exceptionally, all cubs survive. The newborn cubs are extremely vulnerable and are kept by their mothers in this fortress of thorny bushes for safety. As they grow up, lion cubs spend most of their active time suckling and rolling over their mothers. They start walking after 15 days and run after 30 days. In summer, the sky becomes cloudy creating conditions for spectacular sunsets and sunrises. Storms are unpredictable, localized, and very violent. Rarely 
Prolonged rain is followed by morning fog. The rain floods the river valleys. With the rain, migratory birds flock to the Kalahari. Autumn is the greenest time of the year. By now, green grass covers the sand mantle. Red heart beasts cavort in the grass, a display typical of this species. As rain falls unevenly over the land, some areas are greener than others, and some, having received no rain, remain parched. Red heart beasts are the fastest antelopes of the Kalahari. They engage in dominance contests at this time of abundance, fighting on their knees far more often than other antelopes. Locking, instead of swinging horns, prevents injuries. The contest is over when one of the fighters flees, chased for a short distance by the winner. The lion cubs are two months old and still vulnerable. When hunting, the mothers leave the cubs under the protection of their fathers. During the cooler months, Lions often hunt by walking along the road, where they are hidden from the herbivore's gaze by the road's ditches. If a close by quarry is spotted, they stalk it as far as possible before charging for the kill. The success rate is as low as 20% for a single lioness, 30% for two or more lionesses, and lower during day hunts. Lions hunt mainly during the night, when they stalk their prey, taking advantage of an excellent night vision. Rarely, they hunt during the coolest hours of the day, early in the morning and late in the evening. Wilderbeasts, and to a lesser degree elands, are their most common prey when hunting in the dry river valleys, while hemsbach are their most common prey when hunting in the dunes. By this time, Sama melons and hemsbach cucumbers cover the veld. They provide vital moisture for animals taking advantage of pastures far away from the few water holes. In winter, the nights are freezing and the days are cool. During midday, animals rest in the sun. Elands the biggest antelopes, migrate from the north into the river valleys. The elands are the only spiral horned antelope that live in open grassland. All other spiral horned antelopes prefer wooded areas that provide better camouflage. Meanwhile, the lion cubs are growing up. They spend most mornings at the same water hole, roughhousing with their playful mothers. Climbing up and down, this nearby camel thorn tree has become their favorite pastime. The majority of Hemsbach live a nomadic life in small groups of mixed gender. Territorial bulls live a solitary life, except when they succeed to herd a few females. During winter, both male and female Hemsbach display dominance. This cow has an advantage in fights over other cows, but not bulls, because of her malformed horns. Shorthorns, a smallish but very aggressive bull, dominates his territory for several months. The heads up posture displays dominance, while the heads down posture displays submission. In this case, a fight is avoided. If both animals keep their heads up, a fight follows. The male rank is maintained by frequent sparring. Only adults with fully developed genitals compete for dominance. They deliver hard blows, then lock their horns, and push and twist with their powerful bodies. 
Stabbing fights occur only at the highest intensity and can result in ghastly injuries. Such fights occur more often during dry years and when very aggressive bulls are involved. This was Shorthorn's last fight. The next morning he had lost his horns. As antelope horns do not grow back, he will be unable to mate from now on. Two years later, Shorthorns is alive and well, but he has lost his territory and his rank has fallen. In places where dominance is asserted, such as water holes, he must wait to drink with the cows. In spring, trees and shrubs bloom. The spring bucks eagerly devour this new source of food. Both male and female ostriches fight for dominance. The elegant giraffes engage in neck fights. Individual jackals cannot threaten adult antelopes. Not even the little steenbok. But, as a group, they do not hesitate to harass much bigger carnivores to gain access to a carcass. The solitary brown hyena is more easily intimidated than the bigger and gregarious spotted hyenas. Jackals especially pester cheetahs, because as the smaller of the big carnivores, often cheetahs fail to defend their kill. Cheetahs gorge as fast as possible and then leave the carcass when bigger predators show up, sometimes even to a bunch of jackals. But there are always exceptions. In late spring, a brown hyena drinking at a water hole is disturbed by the yapping of a single jackal. As she retreats, this crazy jackal aggressively chases her away from his waterhole. A month later, Crazy Jackal tries a wounded and dead display on a female cheetah heading for water, but he is ignored by the cat who takes over the water hole. This invasion triggers Crazy Jackal's ire and he starts a confrontation. At first, the cheetah tries to whack him, but she is unsuccessful and the jackal makes a stand at the water hole. After drinking her fill, the perplexed cheetah gives up and moves on. Crazy Jackal is again king of the waterhole. A few days later, a lioness approaches the waterhole. <laughs> Foolishly, Crazy Jackal tries one of his tricks with the wrong beast, and the result is catastrophic. Why Crazy Jackal was so rabid about this waterhole remains unexplained. He was neither defending a litter, nor was it territorial behavior in which aggression is directed towards other jackals. From king of the water hole, he becomes a toy for our six cubs. For most antelopes, Calving season starts in spring and extends through summer and autumn. 
Wilderbeest's calving season is shorter starting in December or January, depending on the rain. Cape foxes are nocturnal for most of the year. Only in November are mothers and pups visible during the day. Still learning how to survive, these jackal pups ignore the food regurgitated by one of their parents. The pups are more interested in playing than eating. The lion cubs are seven months old. One of them we nicknamed, what is she thinking? For alone, she pretends to hunt a herd of hemsbach. At one year of age, the lion cubs spend most of their time playing at their preferred tree and water hole. Both big cubs and adult lions sharpen their claws against tree trunks to remove loose claw sheets and mark their territory. As they grow older, the male cubs will increasingly spend time away from the pride. The experience gained during these temporary escapades is vital to their survival during the bachelor years. Kalahari lions are skillful hunters of porcupines, despite the porcupine's quills, which make them a difficult and dangerous prey. This time, the cubs are still unexperienced, and the porcupine survives the encounter unscathed. At this age, the cubs have reached their peak as tree climbers. The lighter females can successfully scamper up the vertical trunks of the camel thorn tree, while the heavier males can only try or, frustrated, pull the climbing females down. At two years of age, the male cubs are not welcome in the pride anymore, even by their mothers. In a few months, they will be expelled by the ruling males. In the meantime, nothing is better than drinking and splashing at the old water hole. Numerous spottings of puff adders are believed to herald a drought year. By late autumn, vegetation is already scarce and dry. Antelopes have to drink often to compensate for lack of moisture in foodstuff, and lions hunt by ambushing water holes. What is she thinking? Attacks the wildebeests too early, while her mother attacks late. By summer, only 50 millimeters of rain has fallen instead of the average 230 millimeters. Sour grass, the main source of food for several animal species, has failed to grow and the population of rodents is collapsing. All antelopes suffer, but not to the same degree. Springboks and hemboks are better adapted to the harshness of desert life. They are not only both grazers and browsers, but also dig for roots. The wildebeests are in poor shape. Few drop dead near water holes. The migrant elands are by far the most effective antelopes, being less adapted to this extreme environment. The elands cannot migrate north until it rains as they are too debilitated to survive the long trek. They are so weak they can hardly run and need to drink frequently, becoming easy prey to lions hunting at the few water holes. Lions have such a profusion of food that the survival rate of their cubs is higher than the average 
Cub starvation and abandonment is more likely when large prey are hard to kill. Jackals, the most successful scavengers of the southern Kalahari, also enjoy a season of plenty, even if chased by outraged lion cubs. What is she thinking? Is hunting at a waterhole. She is in training and the two more experienced lionesses let her try first. Unfortunately, she is stalking with the wind blowing towards the antelopes and she is detected early. Lions do not understand the importance of the wind and hunt as much against the wind than with the wind, despite being far more successful when hunting against the wind. The next day, the wind is blowing towards her and the ambush succeeds. After carefully stalking her quarry, Using man-made structures for concealment and a short chase, she brings down her prey. At first, the wildebeest is stunned, but after a short while, it tries to free itself by kicking. The stranglehold protects the lioness from the horns and hooves of struggling victims and makes it easy to hold them down until all movements cease. The two lionesses prepare to feed, starting from the antelope's belly, when, suddenly, the wildebeest revives. The suffocating bite was poorly executed. A second neck bite does the job. Finally, after a prolonged struggle and the assistance of the two senior lionesses, what is she thinking as her first kill? In December, dark clouds cover the sky and the rain returns with vengeance. After the rain, new grass grows and the elands, after regaining a healthy weight, can finally migrate north. Easy hunting at the waterholes is over. Our lions have moved into the dunes where the mother sprints to the waterhole and dumps an unsuspecting carcass into the water. The smaller cat climbs out and makes a stand. Soon, what is she thinking joins her mother for the fun, and the poor cargo stands its ground against two towering lionesses. After some time, the lionesses retreat to rest in the shadow, and the carcal emerges unscathed from the encounter. In February, her brothers are surprised in the open by a heavy downpour. They left the pride a few months ago and started their bachelor years. Instead of taking shelter under a tree, as any sensible lion would do, they revert to cub behavior. Nothing seems more fun than playing in the rain and competing for possession of a piece of wood. Or chasing each other in the waterlogged plain. After several rainstorms, the sunrise heralds a new and prosperous year. Years of plenty 
follow years of drought in the never-ending cycle of the Kalahari.